Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens. In this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Plantagenet, the Cousins War for England, 1459 to 1485, the designed by Francisco Gradale. I hope I'm saying that right. This is Levy and Campaign Series Volume 4. They're already up to Volume 4, and I think this thing just started like maybe a year ago, maybe two. It's a big box. It's a uh, but, you know, one of the big three-inch boxes here. And it is rated, let's see, five on complexity, seven on solitaire suitability. I don't think this includes any kind of AI, but it does kind of include some rules for playing the game solo. So we'll double check that as we look at what you get inside. All right, again, as usual with these, some lovely artwork. I assume this is original for the game and it kind of keeps the same style and theme. Very nice. Heavy, heavy box. All right, so we're gonna start with the rules of play and a 32 page rule book. Yep, 32 pages. GMT, wonderful matte finish paper, as always, as well as they're back to now, and I'm glad they're back to. They had a brief flirtation with some bad stock for a while, but they've come back. So here's a summary, a summary of changes from earlier volumes. If you've played the game before, or any of the uh, Levying Campaign series, this is going to just tell you what you need to know to get right into the game, because you pretty much know the system. Um, Let's see if it mentions what I was talking about with Solo here. Uh, no, it's in the next book. So this covers the scenarios, the introduction, set up the calendar, levy and campaign modes, and victory and scenarios. There's three scenarios, respite and war, heirs, heirs in succession, and the wars. So it's full color graphics, very period, period-esque graphics, it's a scene of, you know, an artwork scene from the Battle of Towton, so let's take a look at the scenarios here, page 19, all right, prepare general setup for 2.1 and agree on the use of hidden mats, which obviously you couldn't do with your solo. But then you start out with the, with the scenarios 1A, Henry the Sixth, Towton, Somerset's Return. And then, oh, well, those, are, those are phases where it is 1A, 1B, and 1C. And this is 2, Warwick's Rebellion, and 3, My Kingdom for a Horse. Richard III defends his crown against Henry Tudor to set the fate of the Plantagenet dynasty. And then we have the War of the Roses. I think you owe me an apology, Barbara. If you have something to say, I'd like to hear it. I want a divorce. No, you don't. And the Plantagenets go to war. Yeah, lots of lots of cool options here. Actually, lots of scenarios. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. All right, so that's the rules of playbook. Now we've got our background book. Now this is much bigger. This is 56 pages. Again, the same great card stock. Talks about the cards, the event cards. Gives a little more detail on how to play them different people involved, the different uh, commanders, historical background. So let's take a look at the solitaire and team play. See what it says here, how the solitaire works. Plantagenet does not include a solo system, but can accommodate a single player running both sides with normal rules. So you're going to true solo it playing both sides. Um, ignoring aspects of hidden information such as held events and plan stacks. In addition, here's a list of alternatives to increase the fun for solo player. Play with hidden mats. 
Keep each side's lords behind the screen to aid your focus on one side at a time. Help you forget what the other side's lords have mustered. That doesn't ever work for me. Uh, select one side as your side, the other side is the opponent. Play both sides. However, give the opposing side one extra command card. Each campaign is compensation for your focus on one side. Select one side as your own. After forming your side's plan, shuffle those cards face down. For the opposing side, do not create a plan stack. Instead of flipping command cards, choose any card from its deck and play it as best you can. You can also play in teams. Each, each one runs, each side is a committee. There's another Vietnam for you. All right. So the background book has the solitaire, has full examples of play, campaign history, and then as we looked up the lords, the vassal histories, arts of war, notes, design notes, selected sources, and the list of cards that are going to be involved. And we've got a sticker sheet, which means there's blocks. So these are the stickers. Uh, these are the stickers and these are the spares. And they are pre-rounded. You just peel and stick. There's a few white ones here, but then mostly you've got your your uh, blocks, and then again a whole space, whole set of spares. Uh, you know they're not going to be blocks; they're going to be probably markers since they're round. All right. And then we've got our hidden screens that you set up to uh, to hide behind what you're doing. One for each side. Then we got our player reference cards. There's two of these. Detail the different commands that are available. It's a double whip, GMT normal, coded card stock. Uh, it's got your forces, your strongholds, your battle, steps for battle, and the sequence of play. You got two copies of that, one for each player. And then we've got our War of the Roses special rules. Let's see if we can get this up here. There it is. So there's for the special War of the Roses campaign. These are your special rules here, and succession rules. That's single, uh, double sided, single, single width. Then we've got our mounted board. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And then we've got our counters. These are pre-rounded punch counters. Usual uh, GMT, good quality, good thickness pre-rounded. This is sheet one. We've got control markers here for the for the two roses. And then coins, provisions, carts, ships, multipliers, depletion and valor, exhausted and exiled markers. Retinues, ships, and fled retinues. So we got two sheets of counters. And then we've got a six dice. We've got three red and three white. Let's do some math here. Oh, easily, easily white one here. We got ten to eight. No, ten to six. Learn math, Kevin. Alright. And then we've got baggle bags for storage. We've got our little discs for the two sides and some brown some black markers tracking markers and a purple one and then the stickers that we saw earlier are going to go on these discs and then we've got these little bricks in gray and green and brown to be used to who knows what all right and then we've got two decks of cards Three decks, well, more than that. We've got four decks of cards. And then we've got our Lord's boards. And these are pre-punched, which is nice. You got your battle boards here, defender and attacker, single-sided. You're gonna put your forces on there to fight. Oh, this is interesting. This is very cool. I believe some of the others had specific cards for each Lord, and these do not because I guess each battle is going to have a different grouping. So rather than print multiples that would not get used, you simply put your Lord card on here, whether they're routed, they're assets, and they are all identical. So you get a stack of these. looks like you get 10. Yeah, 10 of those. Make sure I'm counting right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You get 12 of these. So these would be for both players to share. 
So that's a pretty cool touch, do it that way. Then you get your cards. And it's cheaper and less resources. All right, so you get four decks of cards. I mean, excuse me, four wrapped packages of cards, but they split up into basically three decks for red and three decks for white. So you've got the Arts of War cards, which will be the cards that you're playing throughout the game with your different, different abilities. Uh, leeward battle line, hold, play in battle to have all missile hits, round up to friendly lords unless enemy is also playing leeward battle line. Or culverins and falconets at the start of round one of battle. This lord may discard this card to add one die roll of missile hits. So those are your various, those are the, you get a deck of those for the red side. You get an Arts of War deck for the blue or white side, depending on if you're looking at the flower or the card. Then you get your two lord decks, which show the different lords that'll be in play in the different campaigns, different scenarios. Henry, you got Henry the Sixth. We'll look at this side first. Henry the Sixth, Somerset, Exeter, Buckingham, Northumberland, Warwick, Jasper Tudor, Clarence, Margaret, Somerset, Oxford, Exeter, Henry Tudor, and Jasper Tudor. So these are some of these are marked two. So there's a second one of them on here. And for the white side, York. March, Salisbury, Warwick, Rutland. Yeah, Warwick changed sides. Rutland, Edward IV, Pembroke, Devon, Northumberland, Gloucester, Richard III, Norfolk, Northumberland again, Gloucester again. So we got our Lord cards, and then we got our Command cards as well, which allow you, again, they've got those Lords listed, and so you'll have these to be able to put in play and control their forces. So you got command decks for each side. All right, so here's that map. Now it's designed to sit in portrait mode. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into landscape mode just so we can see it all at one time here. It was very colorful, very, very period. Uh, feels like a feels like period map, which I like. Uh, you get the you know the Irish Sea, you get the whole map of uh, of uh, United Kingdom here. Um, so we've got our turn track, uh, one through fifteen turns. Uh, you got your uh, legend, town, city. See town, city fortresses on the map here. They're named. Um, I'm assuming this is a victory point track going up to forty-five, and then Burgundy, Scotland, Ireland, France all have off-board. Uh, uh, markers or uh, zones here that you can uh, I guess put units into and bring them into the game um, so pretty cool very not very again very nice it's a very small it's two it's four panels so you're only looking at uh, let's see 22 by 17 so didn't take up a lot of table space to play this two-player game so let's do a quick recap of everything else you get in the box so if you pick up a copy of Plantagenet, The Cousins of War for England, 1459 to 1485, you're going to get those uh, stack of Lord uh, battle reference boards, the combat board. You're going to get those four wrap decks that, that become four or six uh, assorted decks of, of cards for both the white and the red side. You're going to get the bag o bricks, the bag o mar uh, tokens, as well as a few more of the bricks. You're going to get those six dice, bag of bags, two counter sheets, a very non-counter dense game. You're going to get that game board we just took a look at, the War of the Roses additional reference card, Two copies of the player reference card with a sequence of play, the various commands, and other charts and references inside. The two, pri two privacy screens, one for each player. The sheet of stickers to go on those tokens. The background book, 56 page background book. And the 32 page rules of play. And that is everything that comes in Plantagenet Cousins War for England 
1459-1485, designed by Francisco Gradale and produced by GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!